thank you for today. Another day, Lord, of worship, fellowship, O oh Lord, and coming together, Lord, to learn of you. We thank you, Father, for thy presence, Lord, being here with us. We thank you, Lord, for testimony, for edifications, Lord. We thank you, Father, for learning from one another, Lord, life experiences of how that we learn to walk in thy life and to learn patience also, Lord, according to what you have granted us in this life. Father, Lord, we commit this time to you now in the hearing of thy word for those that are not here today, wherever they may be, Lord, and those who are not well today. We tonight, rather, as to the visit of Queen of Sheba, but uh, let us just go through that from verse 22 today regarding uh, King Solomon's uh, greatness. Second Chronicle chapter 9 verse 22 to 28. And King Solomon passed all, passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his presence, vessels of silver, vessels of gold and raiment, uh, harness and uh, spices, horses and mules, arrayed year by year. And Solomon had four thousand stocks for horses and chariot, twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the uh, chariot city with the king at Jerusalem. And he ran over all the kings from the river even unto the land of the Philistine and to the border of Egypt. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones, and silver wood made he as the sycamore tree that are in the low plains in abundance. And they brought unto Solomon horses of Egypt and out of all land. Verse, uh, okay, we stop right there. Now, here we have the greatness of King Solomon. And uh, we said last week that Solomon uh, was visited even by the Queen of Sheba. Now we don't know where Sheba is. And I said uh, uh, it is believed that Solomon is so wise that he could answer practically uh, every riddle, you know, every question you ask about animals or about life, or rivers, or earth, or universe, some, some, something like that. And the only thing that uh, what we know is that there are a lot of uh, proverbs written, or humor in some way, written about what Solomon was supposed, what supposed to have uh, uh, said in his lifetime, or answered in his lifetime to questions. Here is an example, here are some examples of it, any which I think are pretty good. Queen Shiva asked, Queen of Shiva asked him, what is evil? And I think it is very philosophical, it's just like you ask Confucius some question. You know? But I think these are very deep things that you have to think about and ponder about before you answer. And it must be practical, it must be correct. Now, if you ask anybody today, what is evil? What, what do you consider evil? And you, of course, you can, everybody have different answer. Now, Solomon said, The eyes of the Lord in every place monitor good and evil. And in that is the definition. So he doesn't, he doesn't tell you what evil is, but he tells you what, what it is in one direct way, indirect way. Alright, the Lord, the eyes of the Lord in every place monitor good and evil. And in them is the definition. Queen Shiva asks again, are the eyes or the ears superior? Is the eyes superior or the ears superior? And Solomon said, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. The Lord make, have made both. Degrees of deafness and blindness. These are the man's province and measurable. And that's true. So which one is superior? It's only how you measure. The queen asked, what is the most, in, most powerful organ of the body? Solomon. Now, what do you think is the most powerful organ of the body? You, I don't know what you think, the heart? 
your brain, your heart, the brain. But if I ask, of course, uh, what is the biggest organ of the body? A lot of people doesn't realize, they don't know. What is the biggest organ in the body? Can you think about it? Skin. The skin. Yeah. Some people are thinking, hey, maybe it's the liver or something. It's the skin. But uh, here it is. What is the most powerful organ of the body? Solomon. What is it? The heart? The brain? Your lungs? <laughs> or your muscle? Oh my, here's what Solomon said. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So the tongue is the most powerful organ of the body. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Did the Bible say that? Yes. You know? How are the body and the spirit connected? Solomon said, the baseness of spirit is derived from their bodies. The normalities of the body is derived from their spirits. What you are is what you are by the spirit, right? It's true, isn't it? Ah, here yeah, this one I like. This one is something which uh, perhaps uh, we uh, find interesting here. I never thought of it, but the queen asked him, he said, she said, seven leave. Nine, nine, enter. Then he said, two, pour out the drop. And uh, only one drinks. Now have you ever come across this? I said, wow. Seven leave, nine enter, two part, your draw, one drinks. Yes, Queen Shiva thing and she got our food and Solomon did me. And Solomon said, Seven are the days of the woman's menstruation. Nine the months of her pregnancy. Her two breasts nourish the child and only one drinks. You know, this is just kind of strange, you know. It's all about the woman. Seven leaves because the blood leaves the body, discharge. Nine enters because the pregnancy is then, so you know there is a little fetus there. Two part the draw is that the breasts of course pour out milk. And only one sucks. Huh. So wonder, oh, okay. Now here is one quick, very good one, if you can think about. So I was wondering how wise Solomon is. She asked Solomon, how can a woman say to her son, your father is my father. Think about it. Huh? How can a woman say to her son, your father is my father. Your grandfather, my husband. You are my son. And I'm your sister. Oh my. <laughs> no, I think that's kind of really uh, of the... You know, you heard the song that says, I am my own grandfather. Is that the song, I am my own grandfather. How did you and so and so intermarry so 